today we are discussing some important mcqs based on the human reproduction and that will be helpful for the forthcoming neat examinations the first question is common duct formed by the union of vas deferens and the duct of the seminal vesicle if you have viewed my video based on the male reproductive system then in that video i have said that the vas deferens vas deferens enter into the abdominal cavity makes a turn around the urinary bladder or makes a loop around the urinary bladder and then the vas deferens combines with the duct of the seminal vesicle to form a new duct and that new duct is called as ejaculatory duct means always remember the duct of vas deferens or the spermatic duct combines with the duct of the seminal vesicle to form a new duct and that new duct is called as ejaculatory duct and ejaculatory duct releases the semen into the urethra that you know very well so the question number 1 is having the answer c that is ejaculatory duct question number 2 cryptorchidism is what is cryptorchidism it is the disorder found in some male childs in which the testes are unable to descend down in the scrotum sac normally what we see that during the 7th month of the embryonic development the testes descend down from abdomen down into the scrotum sac but there are few children in which the testes are unable to descend down in scrotum sac from the abdominal cavity and this disorder is called as a cryptorchidism means the testes is non descendant of testes into scrotum right the options were non development of testes no non descendant of testes into scrotum sac yes removal of scrotum no breaking connection of vasculars no so when testes are not able to descend down in scrotum sac the disorder is called as cryptorchidism so the answer is b question number 3 the role of leydig cells we know very well that in between in between the seminiferous tubules certain interstitial spaces are found and in that interstitial spaces special cells are found called as the interstitial cells but that interstitial cells were actually discovered by the leydig and that's why the interstitial cells were called as the leydig cells and the prime function of the leydig cells is to release the male sex hormone which is known as the testosterone which is responsible for the production of secondary sexual characteristics in the males so role of leydig cells of testes is to provide nutrition uh, nourishment to the sperms no provide motility to sperms no bring about maturation of sperms no synthesis of testosterone hormone yes so role of leydig cells is to uh, synthesize the male sex hormone known as the testosterone so the question number 3 must be having the answer d question number 4 vas deferens vas deferens is known as the spermatic duct arises from so in my class we have already studied that the epididymis is having the three parts caput corpus and cauda and the last part of the epididymis is called as the cauda epididymis it means the caudal epididymis from which the spermatic duct or the vas deferens arises so the vas deferens arises from always remember vas deferens arises from the cauda part of that region cauda means the last part caput corpus and cauda three parts are there na caput corpus and cauda so the last part is called as the cauda from which the vas deferens arises so question number 4 is having the answer a Question number five: Tubuli recti of seminiferous tubules open into. Always remember that seminiferous tubules are found in the testicular lobules found in the testes. Fine, that you know very well. Now what happens? The seminiferous tubules opens into, uh, uh, or we can say it is all the seminiferous tubules forms the tubuli recti, which were known as the straight tubules. Okay. and these tubuli recti of the seminiferous tubules opens into the network like structure called as the reti testes so what are tubuli recti tubuli recti are the straight tubules formed by the seminiferous tubules 
so seminiferous tubules first forms tubuli recti and then tubuli recti opens into red testes which is a network like structure so question number 5 is having the answer d next question question number 6 temperature in scrotum set necessary for sperm formation should be always remember that the, te the testes descend down in human beings from abdominal cavity into the scrotum set because of the temperature conditions the body human body temperature is 37 degrees celsius and at this temperature spermatogenesis or the development of the sperm is not possible so that's why the testes descend down in the scrotum sac and the scrotum sac is having the temperature at least 2 degree to 2.5 degrees celsius less than the body temperature and at this temperature spermatogenesis is possible so temperature in scrotum sac necessary for sperm production should be 2 degree above body temperature no 2 degree below body temperature so yes the temperature in scrotum sac necessary for sperm formation should be 2 degree celsius below the body temperature 8 8 is not applicable it must be below 2 to 2.5 degree celsius so the answer is question number 6 is having the answer b now sperms are stored and nourished inside always remember that the sperms are temporarily stored and nourished in which part Cowper's gland no epididymis yes because for the temporary storage of the sperm is done inside the epididymis uh, seminiferous tubules and vasa afferentia are not at all concerned with the storage of the sperms so sperms are stored and nourished inside always remember it is epididymis question number 7 is having the answer B ostium is an aperture present in if you have studied the oviduct then oviduct is having oviduct or the fallopian tube is having the three parts the first part is funnel like known as the infundibulum which is having certain finger like projections on it known as the fimbri the second part is known as the ampulla and the third part is known as the isthmus which is connected with the uterine cavity so the first part known as the infundibulum which is funnel like is having the aperture right and that aperture is called as the ostium so always remember ostium is an aperture which is concerned with the infundibulum part of the oviduct so ostium is an aperture present in ampulla part no fallopian funnel yes fallopian funnel means the first part of the fallopian tube known as the infundibulum is known as the fallopian funnel cloaca no it is not having uh, it, a cloaca is not found in the human beings so the answer must be fallopian funnel don't be confused with fallopian funnel given in the option fallopian funnel means the first part of the oviduct known as the uh, infundibulum so ostium is an aperture present in fallopian funnel so question number 8 must be having the answer B ok so dear students these were some important questions based on the human reproduction topic we will be coming soon with few more videos thanks a lot for watching me